All right, hello my friends, welcome back. Uh, episode number two of my starting uh, your own clothing brand series. Um, firstly, thank you very much for the positive feedback on episode one. I was surprised um, how many people were, were keen. I didn't know if it was even a good idea, but apparently lots of people liked it, got a lot of messages about it. Uh, so yeah, I think that's really cool. So thank you very much for that. So for, for this episode, so um, episode one, you know, I just talked about realistic expectations, pretty much knowing what you're getting yourself into. This one, I want to talk about stuff that's a bit more practical uh, and talk about, you know, like doing your first release, really just just launching your first lot of T-shirts or whatever it is that you decide to do. Um, I'll just keep talking about T-shirts because that's my background and my experience. But a lot of this stuff will still apply to, to you know, pretty much a whole bunch of other little businesses as well. So one of the questions that uh, I've had a lot of is, you know, what uh, what type of T-shirts and stock should you get your, your first stuff printed on? how many you should order and that kind of thing. So one of the first things uh, I would advise is not to use a cheap stock. Um, there's a bit of a temptation, especially when you first start the brand. I mean, in fact, I actually did it as well, where you know, if you're only ordering a small number of t-shirts, you don't have much money, you could just get a cheaper stock and think it's all good, I'll upgrade later as the brand gets better. Uh, I actually would not advise that now. I would advise to get the best quality stock that you can get from the very, very start and start to set that expectation because your customers are going to receive that. Um, if it's not a very comfortable shirt or if they're not a huge fan of that brand of stock, <clears throat> excuse me, if they're not a huge brand, huge fan of that brand of stock, uh, that image will stick and they'll just never come back anyway. And I've done that with other brands as well, um, which is a shame because there are some shirts that I've bought that uh, are designed by some of my favorite artists and I love the, the design, but the shirts themselves just aren't that comfortable or they feel just a bit cheap and I just don't really wear them because of that. And you don't realize it until you really, really think about it. But um, yeah, so, so don't do that. Now, to give you some actual brands, uh, as I said in the last video, I'm in Australia, so the stock that I have access to might be different to stuff that you buy, like in America, for example. Uh, but a brand that I'm a huge fan of is called AS Color. Um, they are you know, definitely the, the, better, the better brand of um, shirt. They are, the they are definitely the better stockist of of, of blank shirts in, in Australia, in my opinion. Um, one of the brands I started off with at the very beginning was Gildan or Gildan, however it's pronounced. Um, at the time, they only had a couple of t-shirt variants available. So I think the ones that I had, were they were really cheap, but they were like a, called a heavy, a heavy stock or something like that. Now to give them credit, you know, to be fair, I'm not gonna throw them under the bus. Apparently they've actually released a whole bunch of other types of shirts that are much higher quality since then. So that's not to say, not to use them, but the stuff that I was getting at the time, um, it was about half the price, but the quality was just nowhere near, nowhere near the same. So I would definitely advise, yeah, getting getting a good um, brand. If you're in Australia, I think there's another company now called Blanks uh, that, that releases good shirts as well. I haven't actually used them. They don't think they were around when I was doing clothing brands and stuff that much, but yeah, definitely think about uh, uh, the better stuff that, that you can get if you do some Googling and stuff like that, you'll find a lot of forums, there's a lot of forums with t-shirt designers and stuff on them talking about stock in America, for example. So I'm sure you'll be able to find some, you know, some good recommendations for the best stock to get. So as far as how much you should uh, order at the start, pretty much as little as possible is the best advice I can give you. Just talk to your local screen printers, start Googling, start looking on Instagram for local uh, screen printers. I reckon that's your best bet. Um, just find someone local, ask what the minimum is, take their advice on stock and stuff as well, uh, and pretty much just get as few shirts as you can because they'll almost certainly won't sell. You might be tempted to get 100 shirts uh, instead of, say, 50 because you know you get a discount and stuff like that. If you're a brand new company and you've got one design and you order 100 shirts, you are not going to move those 100 shirts, uh, I don't think, just to be a um, bit of a jerk but just being honest yeah you, you'll have a bunch of those shirts left over and they'll be sitting around for ages in fact i still have a few shirts in boxes and stuff here from years ago from first releases i did i did when i ordered too many and stuff like that so not something that you really want um just a waste of money really so yeah order as few as you can the cost will be higher but remember that you're probably not going to make any profit or any real money in the early days anyway it'll probably take you a year or two to even start seeing much of a return so Focus not on making a profit, but on providing a really good experience and a really good product instead. Um, so yeah, get get as few as you can. You want it to also feel kind of limited and kind of exclusive at the start, I think. Um, if you 
come out of nowhere, this brand new brand pops up and you've got like 50 different types of shirts and all this different stock and stuff like that. I don't know, it takes away from that. Like people like being the first to hear about something and the first to have something. You know, like when a band is really, really small and people, and then they start to grow and become mainstream and people say like, oh, I liked that band when, when no one knew who they were or whatever, now they're mainstream and I don't like it anymore. That very much applies to t-shirts as well. People like wearing stuff that no one else has. So if you do a small limited run and then you maybe say that you're not gonna print that design again, like it's just the, the only time you're gonna do that one, people tend to really, really like that, especially in the early days when you're underground and you're a really, really small brand. So I would advise to, to do that as well. Um, now, what should you get on your first run of t-shirts? I would probably advise not to put your logo on them. I think people, you know, start a brand and they think, oh, well, this is the first t-shirt that I've ever released, so it should have my brand, it should just have my logo on it, you know, start simple, start with the logo shirt. But when you first start a brand, your logo your logo has, an, has no value. So um, it's not like if you go around, you know, Nike, for example, you can put the Nike logo on a bazillion shirts and it will, it will always sell, um, even though there's not really any creative aspect to it. But that's because the logo has a lot of value and you know it's been established and no one's gonna know who you are or what your logo is. So you're better off starting with something that's a bit more eye-catching and, and appealing and, and a bit more creative and stuff like that in my opinion. So start with a really cool design. Still have your logo name, uh, your brand name in there or a logo in there somewhere, but don't make it just like a t-shirt with your logo um, just slapped on the front of it if it's just a simple looking logo. Uh, probably won't sell as well as something that's a bit more illustrative and a bit more interesting, I think. So how much should you charge for your first set of, of t-shirts, your first run of shirts? Um, don't sell yourself short is probably the best advice I can give you. There's a real temptation. In fact, I did this. This is another one of my mistakes. Um, when I first launched with my first, I had two designs actually that I did at the very start. And I thought to myself, oh, I've got a job. I've got a stable income. I, I know I'm not going to make money just yet. I'm not really interested in just like making quick cash off this. I just want to see my shirts on as many people as I can and start spreading you know, the brand and start building that awareness. So even though I had planned to sell t-shirts for say 30 bucks or something, um, when I did the first run of shirts, I thought, oh, I'll just sell them for like 15, 20 bucks, really cheap, more likely to get sales early on, get the shirts out to people and all that sort of stuff. Um, I think that's a really bad idea. I'd actually advise against that now. Um, I did sell shirts early on, but then later on, as you start to do the other print runs and the brand starts to grow and you start to kind of put that price up to the point where there's actually a profit margin and you're not losing money on every single shirt, people get kind of confused because they're like, hang on a minute, I was only paying 20 bucks or 15 bucks for shirts before. Now you want 30 or 35, like what's going on here? Why is it more expensive? Um, you've already created that, um, you know, that impression that it's a cheaper brand uh, and yeah, people will be less likely to, to stick it out then. And some of these people that buy the shirts at the very start, uh, they tend to be some of your most loyal followers and your most loyal customers because they, they tend to, I've still got guys that follow me on Instagram and talk to me every now and then that were the first people to buy t-shirts off me in 2011 or 2012 when I ran a brand and they still keep in touch. So you will find that there's people like that that stick around. And if you start bumping up the price, it's almost like you're punishing those people that have that stuck around from, from day one. So I would advise against that, set the expectations straight away that shirts are gonna be 30 bucks or whatever you decide, whatever you think is fair. Cause some people, you know, some people sell them for $50 and stuff like that in Australia. It's entirely up to you. Um, I tend to think that around the 30, $35 range is reasonable. You're not overselling or underselling. That's just my, my stance on it. So yeah, don't, uh, don't be tempted to do like an opening sale and be like 50% off for the first week that we launched to, you know, blah, 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 whatever, sell a bunch of shirts. Uh, I think it's actually a negative, uh, a negative thing in the long run. So I would advise against that. Um, I would also advise not to, not to launch prematurely, um, which is uh, another thing that I've, I, I made a mistake with. So you'll be tempted Let's say you you get the shirts in. Actually, here's a I can do a couple of good stories about this that I've screwed up pretty badly. So let's say you order the first couple of designs, you get the shirts in. Um, you want to sell them online and stuff like that. You're just pumped to sell these shirts. People have been asking for them. You've been posting teasers of the designs and stuff, which is what I did. People are like, yeah, I want to buy the shirt. I want to buy the shirt. And then my website 
wasn't quite finished yet. Like I'd put the, the stock on there and stuff, but I hadn't had like photo shoots done and uh, I hadn't finished writing up like good content and, and a nice like about us page and stuff for the contact page. And I was like, whatever, I just want to sell, you know, I want to start selling shirts. People are asking for them, whatever. Chuck them online, made them available. Um, and sure, I did sell some shirts, but I think actually that was a really stupid thing. Um, it was just, yeah, it, it, it leaves a lasting impression, I think, and it looks like you don't know what you're doing. I didn't know what I was doing, to be fair, but um, yeah, it makes it evident that you do not know what you're doing. Try to be really, really patient. Um, I see some brands now, you know, they may even have a new collection coming and they'll just take their online store offline altogether for a month and and you know just build hype for the next release and you can't even buy stuff from the last collection anymore until they put it back online and stuff like that and that's a really really interesting strategy because i used to look at that sort of thing and be like why would you take the store offline when you could be selling shirts you know tons and tons of shirts right now really popular brand like you're just denying money right and you might think that too but in hindsight that would have worked really well that's actually a really really smart way of doing things um so yeah don't don't be like tempted to just rush in and just like whatever people want to buy the shirts i'm gonna chuck them up online i'll finish the website later right now it's time to start the business that's what i did and it was a mistake another mistake i made on that same note was uh i i had a whole bunch of t-shirts done and uh i'd posted on instagram and, and shown photos of the designs and stuff like that and you know the response was really really positive it was the most positive i'd had to that point so people were like really really keen to buy these shirts and I had actually been prepared for this time. I had set up the website. I had nice mock-ups and stuff done all over the website and it was all ready to go, but I didn't have the stock yet. Uh, and I tracked the package. I remember looking at the, the tracking and it's saying like, oh, delivery scheduled for tomorrow because um, they were already in the local area or whatever. And I was like, sweet, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna open these right now, make them available. By the time the orders come in overnight, you know, by the time tomorrow comes, They'll get delivered anyway, so I can package them and ship them straight to the customers. The customers aren't going to know they don't actually have them in stock yet. Um, it's not a big deal. And I did that, and I sold a bunch of shirts, which was awesome. And then I got the stock, and sure enough, there was something wrong with the uh, with the shirts. They weren't right. They weren't printed how I had asked for them and stuff like that. Uh, and that was a huge fuck up. So I then had to make this decision about like, okay, I'm not happy with these shirts. What do I do? Do I send them back to the printers if I do that? Then I have to explain to the bunch of customers that bought shirts that even though they bought shirts that said they were in stock, they weren't actually in stock and I'm an idiot. And that is what I did, by the way. I sent them back and then apologized. Um, and yeah, it was just stupid, uh, stupid mistake on my part. Fortunately, at the time, people were pretty responsive. Um, obviously, I offered to refund and everything like that, but a lot of people were, you know, took it pretty well. But um, I was just lucky, I think, because it, yeah, a lot of people could could easily turn around and just be like, nah, this is stupid and you suck. Don't do that ever again. Um, so don't do that because I did that. Very, very stupid mistake. Another uh, tip I would give you as well for your first designs, your, your first releases, is to try and team up with some local artists or some local designers if you're not a designer yourself uh, and make it more of a collaborative thing. A lot of brands do that with me now. It's kind of interesting because I've, I've sat on both sides of the fence. I was the brand and now I'm the designer for all these other brands. Um, and it's really nice when people contact you and you do the design, but they also want to involve you as a collaborator and, and advertise it and, and put your name to it as well and give you credit for, for the, um, the effort that you put in and stuff like that. And you'll find that if you do that, uh, you'll get a lot of respect both from customers and from the artists themselves as well. And the artist that does the design is also much more likely to help promote the brand for you. So everyone kind of wins. Uh, I think it's a good sort of transparency type thing as well. You're not sitting there making it look like you are this big brand and you designed all these things yourself when in reality you haven't. Um, so I think people respect and they respond well to that like kind of authenticity and that transparency, transparency saying that, you know, you've involved other artists in the process too. So that's something that I would recommend. I did a few collabs with other um, artists and stuff in my brands and stuff like that. And I did that and I would write up you know, like a page on the website about them and the process and show photos and stuff um, of their other artwork and, and that kind of thing. And I think that's really cool. In hindsight, that was one of the better decisions that I that I made. Uh, and I think the response to that kind of thing was really, really positive as well. So I would advise, you know, to, to think about that too. So yeah, anyway, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm rambling again. So I think that's hopefully enough 
uh, advice for the for the first one look up some stock um, don't go cheap at the start don't prematurely launch uh, and you know think it through think through the first design carefully make it limited make it feel exclusive um, charge the right amount don't sell yourself short and try and involve some other artists and stuff in the early stages as well if you can so yeah thank you very much guys for watching uh, I have a whole bunch of other stuff planned coming up as well about doing sales and marketing on Instagram and, and all that other stuff too. So if there's anything else you guys want to hear about in the in that space of launching your own brand that you think I might be able to give you some advice with, definitely ask in the comments or send me a message on Instagram or something and I will see what I can do. So thank you guys.